Pavlov's Dogs and Triggers Ivan Pavlov was a Russian psychologist who made a huge contribution to the field of psychology with the theory of classical conditioning. He accidentally discovered classical or respondent conditioning. During the 1890s, Russian psychologist Ivan Pavlov was researching salivation on dogs in response to being fed. It was during these experiments that he discovered an important learning principle that we now call classical conditioning. Classical conditioning means that a special stimulus causes a specific response. For instance, if you see food, you will salivate. You don't need a psychologist to tell you that. Salivation at the sight of food is an unconditioned response. This simply means it is an automatic reflex or response. You don't need to learn to salivate when you see food. It just happens automatically. Nothing too complicated yet, right? Now we have the learning part of classical conditioning. In one of Pavlov's experiments, he rang a bell every time he fed some dogs. We can say he paired the bell with the arrival of food. Unlike food, which is an unconditioned stimulus, the bell became a conditioned stimulus. It was through the observation that Pavlov discovered that by associating the presentation of food with the help of a lab assistant, a conditioned response occurred. This is because the dog learned that when the bell rang, the food arrived. Pavlov formed a paired association response between an unconditioned stimulus, which is dog food, and a conditioned stimulus, which was the bell. Eventually, Pavlov's dogs began to salivate at the mere sound of a bell. Even when Pavlov did not present the food, the dogs had been conditioned that the bell meant food is on its way, which means they learned this behavior. This learning occurred because of the paired association between the food and the bell. Eventually, both the food and the bell elicited the same response, which was the salivation. So what do dogs and bells have to do with addiction? Remember that in Pavlov's experiment, the bell served as a signal for the dogs that food was on its way. Likewise, certain signals, also called relapse triggers, have a powerful effect on someone with an addiction. These cues can result in a relapse because the brain linked cues and the addiction. For instance, suppose someone always smokes cigarettes in the car on the way home from work. The car and the cigarette form a paired association. Thus, the car signals cigarette is on its way. Just as the bell signaled to Pavlov's dog that food was coming. Once the car has become a conditioned stimulus, a car cue, the car itself can now trigger powerful cravings. Remember how Pavlov's dogs began to salivate at the sound of a bell. We could say that the bell created a craving for the food. This is the same for the person with an addiction in the car. The car. The car creates powerful cravings. Cravings frequently result in relapse. Fortunately, this learning principles have some very helpful recovery implications. Research has demonstrated that if we ring the bell many times without food, the paired association ends. Eventually, the bell will no longer elicit salivation. Let's return to the previous example of a person who smokes cigarettes in the car after work. If this person repeatedly gets into the car after work and does not smoke cigarettes, the cravings will eventually subside. Cure exposure therapy is one type of addiction treatment that relies on classical conditioning. The cues associated with addiction, the sights, smells, locations, people, etc., are understood as conditional stimuli. With repeated cue exposure and without engaging in addictive behavior, these cues lose the power to induce craving. Because most people in recovery cannot realistically eliminate every cue associated with their addiction, it becomes critical to reduce the power of these cues. This may occur through specific types of therapy, such as the cue exposure therapy. It might also occur simply through practice and, of course, time. People who do not experience a reduction in the power of cues are at a significant risk for relapse. Therapists also use classical conditioning to diminish and or eliminate many types of unwanted behaviors. This includes addictive behaviors. Aversive therapy is one application of classical conditioning. In aversion therapy, we intentionally form a paired association between an unwanted behavior and an unpleasant experience. For example, we can administer a drug that causes someone to become horribly nauseous and vomit if they ingest even the slightest bit of alcohol. This intentionally forms a paired association between alcohol and vomiting. Prior to the aversion therapy, a person would ordinarily associate alcohol with positive feelings. After aversion therapy, alcohol is associated with nausea and vomiting. 
For many aversion therapy patients, even the thought of drinking elicits feelings of nausea. The effect of aversion therapy can wear off over several months. However, during the period of its effectiveness, a person can learn to develop a new way of healthy living. The person can practice coping skills that strengthens the ability to enjoy life without alcohol. To clarify, although drinking is a voluntary behavior, cravings and desire for alcohol are not. Treatment from a classical conditioning approach, aversion therapy, diminishes cravings and desire for alcohol by diminishing its appeal. Pavlov's discovery had a major influence on other thinkers as well, like John B. Watson, who is known as the father of behaviorism within psychology. Pavlov's research on classical conditioning has also been extremely vital to understanding how drug and alcohol overdoses and addictions can happen. In this case, the alcohol or drug is the unconditioned stimulus, and the body's production of enzymes to break down the alcohol or drug is the unconditioned response. Since alcohol or drugs are typically consumed at specific times and places, various elements of an addict's surroundings can easily become conditioned stimuli over time, without them even realizing it. Fighting addiction and overdose is not just about finding the willpower to overcome the problem. Much of the complexity of addiction comes from the fact that our body and mind are programmed to easily fall into its trap, and it really can happen without you realizing it because of classical conditioning. Do you know your triggers?